Hi there, my name is Lokananda Priya Shiva Guru. So today I would like to share a story of my dear friend Lolita. She is studying BBA in marketing in the Faculty of Economic and Businesses in Unima. She is the kind of person who loves to dress up and she loves fashion. She is basically a fashionista and all the clothes that she owns is fashionable and trendy according to the current trends. So recently her faculty have launched a dress code campaign where it wants students like Lolita to adhere to the dress code policy in wearing a formal attire and only cover shoes in their faculty. So for person like Lolita who have more concerns when it comes to fashion and the clothing, having hard time adhering to the objectivity of the campaign and often ask questions like, is that the dress code policy is really necessary? Well, well, well. So Lolita should be formalized with the terms dilemma, hinder and mandatory. Dilemma, which is a noun, is a choice between two equal options. Hinder, which is a verb, is to prevent and mandatory is required. So all of these elements are usually associated when issues like dress code rises and these are merely interdependent. So now she's ha really having a hard time whether to decide yes or no for the dress code university policy. Since the purpose of the university dress code policy is still vague and she has less of clarity of why there's even a university dress code policy, she falls under the category of I don't know. So what she decided to do, she decided to ask some of their friends, family, parents, lecturers on what they are thinking about the university dress code policy. Some of them provide a common answers to prepare students for a workplace to boost students' confidence and to create a positive environment. She kind of shocked and upon seeing all the common answers given by them because none of the common answers are negative opinions towards dress code and all of the common answers are positive towards the dress code. Now, she's really having a hard time to whether to disagree, agree or to not sure to agree or disagree. So, she decided to conduct a research in asking students, lecturers and administrators opinions towards the dress code policy. So the main objective will be to ask the true opinions from them. So she also have went through some past studies and found that most of the common elements associated with the, with the issue of dress code rules are freedom of expression, academic achievement, professional practice, financial burden, health issues and authoritarian system. While the implementation of the dress code University faces many obstacles. Lolita perhaps thinks the argument that the dress code impedes an individual freedom of expression poses the greatest challenge. Imagine wearing the same types of attire as your friends and attending a three hour lecture and more so many lectures, and it's really restrict the freedom of expression of students in expressive the expressing their self creatively. And Lolita thinks that students are already have a personal check up with their mind whether what is acceptable and not acceptable in their campuses. So why there's even a dress code rules and that's where self monitoring comes. And not only that, Lolita also thinks that the dress code rules are nothing to do with the academic achievement of a student. According to the past studies, there is no positive relationship between the academic achievement and the dress code policy of students. So the academic achievement of students are merely dependent on the students' effort and hard work and attitude of how they are studying. When it comes to professional practice, Industry 4.0 demands students to have critical thinking communication skills and creativity to things outside of the box. Since Generation Z and millionaires are make up 40% of the workplace, the culture of having a formal attire changes to not having a formal attire and move on casual attire and not just on Fridays. More so, formal clothes are expensive when it comes on buying slacks, ties or long sleeves. And informal clothes are cheap because students will be able to buy in a bundle, for example, three for 50 or three for 45 ringgits. This actually burdens students more when it comes to to wearing a formal attire. Not only that, we have T20, M40 and D40 groups of income people and this actually burdens parents from fulfilling the requirements of their children in providing a formal attire and this makes parents to play less as active parents and more so laundry also causes students to pay more to wash formal clothes. As for the health issues, this dress code plays vital role in providing a protective layer for students, but it's often asked about how about people who have allergic re reaction to the dress code policy rules, such as research, and more so, the famous Malaysian hot weather causes students to dress down. The temperature usually rises and causes students to dress down and wear comfortable clothes to prevent any health issues such as skin rashes or increase in the body temperature. So, this 
then also there's a petition signed by a people pleading to the government allow Malaysian students to wear casual clothes to cool school due to the humid weather not only then most on the time of pandemic formal clothes are changes to casual clothes because casual clothes are easily washable and according to ACO 1971 Minister of Education is responsible for the general policy direction of the higher education of the country so even the dress code is governed and has no bought into pure authoritarian by dress code of the university but that was not a case during the early late 60s and early 70s where students are free to wear whatever they and what and they even drop with their centavalous longs air and took straight to protest against policies so now Lolita has developed a hypothesis where she thinks that there is a positive and significant relationship between freedom of expression and dress code academic achievement and dress code post-professional practice and dress code financial burden and dress code health issues and dress code and authority system and dress code and also the opinions with respect to the students lecturers and administrators so lolita has conducted a quantitative method where the data collection is to the distribution of question and 230 respondents of students lecturers and administrators of five different faculty in a university so in conclusion and findings she have found out the freedom of expression academic achievement professional practice and health issues have a positive and significant relationship with that code however financial but an authoritarian system were not found that significant in the dress code so since it will be a great help for the university where it shows the four elements plays major role and universities can come out with the four elements in deciding the dress code rules for the students